I want to have another interval of the ECG, and that interval is known as the R R interval. Okay? You might get confused. What do you mean by R R interval? Let me see if I have something here. R R interval. Okay. Yes. Yes, please. If I say from R, this is R wave. Okay? From this R wave, you will have the P, Q, R, S, T. Here you will have another R wave, which is not shown here. But you can imagine, isn't it? Yes. The next R wave would be more yes. there yes. at this point. I want to have interval from this R wave to this R wave here. Okay? Now you see. If I want to make an interval between two R waves, two successive R waves, one after another, what do I include? How many waves are coming? Five waves. How many segments are coming? Two. 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 From one R wave to the next R wave. Three segments. Three segments. Three segments. Okay. Two waves and three segments. Is it giving you a complete ECG activity? Yes. yes. Isn't it? Yes. One R wave to the next R wave. If you closely look, you will find. Sure. You are starting from this point, please. You are not starting from the beginning of the R wave. Please. From the top, from the summit, highest point, you are starting. So, NUS. You are including NUS here. <coughs> NUS R wave. If you draw the line from here. How much are you including? Nus R wave. One S wave. One segment. One T wave. T T segment. T wave. T Q segment. Q wave. And Nus of the R wave again, isn't it? Yani you have covered the complete things. So R R interval is telling you what? A complete cardiac electrical activity. If I say P R interval. Atrial electrical activity. If I say QT interval, ventricular activity. If I say no, R R interval, it's a big interval, really. Okay? It is covering everything. Did you get that? Yes. Okay. That's clear. Come on. One more point very quickly. We'll now proceed very quickly. PC. Why do we see positive wave? You might wonder, you might really wonder that sometimes the thinking mind is confused. Sometimes you have a positive wave, sometimes you have a negative wave. Then you try to couple this with depolarization. Okay, maybe depolarization is always positive. Okay? But is it so in the ECG? That depolarization is always positive. <coughs> Atrial depolarization positive. Okay. Ventricular depolarization, three waves. All positive? No. 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 Ventricular depolarization, positive or negative? Positive. positive. Okay. Leave it like this. So you cannot describe like this that a depolarization wave is always positive or a repolarization wave is always negative. La. This is not the way. Okay. Then what is the idea? Why do we have a positive or a negative wave? When do we have a positive wave in the ECG and when do we have a negative wave in the ECG? Yeah. What does it depend on? This is a question. The positive or negative wave on ECG, in different leads, you will have different situations. When you see the ECG in real, you will be surprised really that the sizes of the waves are different, the shapes of the waves are becoming different in 12 leads actually. And sometimes the waves are inverted also, I'll explain it to you. But why do we have a positive wave in the ECG when you're recording system, any lead which is recording, okay, it has a positive electrode module. Okay. If your cardiac electrical activity or the depolarization wave is traveling towards the positive electrode, if it's moving towards the positive electrode, you will always record a positive wave. If it is moving away from the positive electrode, if your cardiac electrical activity is running away, Okay, because that's a very complicated activity, changing the shape. If it is away, then you will have a negative wave. 
when you are having <coughs> depolarization, first of all, when the impulse is passing in the septum, your recording electrode, positive electrode, is the cardiac impulse during depolarization moving away or towards? What do you think? Away. away. And then is it moving towards or away? Towards. Towards. And then it is moving away or towards? Away. 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 So it means in the same depolarization process, the direction of the impulse is changing. If the direction is moving away, you will always have a negative wave. If the direction is towards the recording electrode, then it's positive. Okay? If it is exactly towards it, a big positive. If it is like <coughs> passing close but not very close, then a small positive wave. Then the size of the wave and shape of the wave depends upon the direction of the electrical activity. If the direction is towards, remember one kanun, the basic principle. If your electrical impulse in the recording system is moving close or towards your electrode, you will record a positive wave. If it is moving away, you will record uh, negative. Okay? With this principle, what do you see unusual in this one? U wave. U wave. Did we describe U wave? Yeah. No. In some of the leads, U wave is there. U wave is an infrequent but a normal phenomenon. It may be <coughs> a little wave just at the end of the repolarization. Yani, it is actually a part of repolarization, ventricular repolarization. Sometimes in some leads, you see a slight wave like thing, which is called a U wave. And that U wave is denoting the repolarization of the papillary muscles. Do you remember the papillary muscles yes, modulated inside the heart? Yes, yes. When they have a slow repolarization, so when they are repolarizing, sometimes they form a little wave. But it's not lazim that you have this wave all the time. That's why we don't describe it. Okay? Sometimes U waves are very big and very prominent. Now, that's not a good thing. That is some pathology. A small U wave here and there in the ECG is not a big deal. It's okay. But regular and consistent U waves coming in many leads and big size, that is showing you some electrolyte disturbance, which I am not discussing now, but that is. So U wave is an inconsistent but a normal phenomenon. Why? Last part of repolarization, which part? Papillary muscles, they are repolarizing slowly. So sometimes you see it, sometimes you don't. Okay. <coughs> Leaving these slides, the shape and recording. Look at this one. Look at the phenomenon. What do you see in the topmost diagram? What are you doing? The words are positive. What kind of wave is forming? Positive. You are moving away from the positive electrode. What kind of wave is forming? And when you are first moving towards the positive and then moving away from the negative, then what will you have? A positive wave and then after that, a negative wave. Did you get that? Okay. Now, quickly, it's only a visual. It's only a visual. Just see what's happening. Look at this part. Look at that part. Please keep looking. Keep looking. Okay. See the graph and see the heart. What is forming? And what is happening there? Atria are changing color. Okay. What has been done? Both sides atria have depolarized, isn't it? And now the P wave is complete. Do you see that? What are you doing? AV delay, AV nodal transmission. You don't see that really here in the diagram, isn't it? You can't see that. But you can imagine it's happening. All right. What is now happening? QRS. Color change coming in. All right. What is there? Depolarization is finished and a process, slow process of plateau has begun between the depolarization. A little time is there and you have that segment, isn't it? Yes. Now what is forming? The The color is changing, the green color now, the repolarization has started and that was... Did you get that? Yes. Okay. So now you know the basic interpretations, alright? Uh,
I'm not going for the measurements because I'll do the measurements in the tutorial. Before the tutorial, we'll have a short session where we'll describe how to understand the graph and the measurements of the ECG. Okay? And then you will apply the calculations. I'm not doing calculations. Don't want to waste time here. Okay? When you want to interpret the ECG, okay, you have got to see many things really, okay, one by one. Okay? Your idea begins with the rate of the heart, which is the first and the foremost thing. Okay? You have to calculate the rate. Is it normal? Less than normal? More than normal? What? Okay? Normal cardia, tachycardia, bradycardia, whatever. Rhythm. The regularity of the beat. Is it coming at the regular intervals? You have to see. Rhythm. Okay? Third thing is axis. I told you about the axis. Direction of the cardiac impulse. Is it all right? Normal or not? The waves morphology are the shapes of the wave. P wave, QRS complex, normal in shape. Sometimes they become broad in shape. Sometimes they become <coughs> jagged in shape. Sometimes they become wavy in shape. Yeah, they, there are many abnormalities of the waves. So you have to see the morphology of the waves also. Are the waves appearing normal? Sometimes five fit waves, two. One wave is divided into two and it appears like this. Anyway, wave morphology is another feature. This is the protocol that you have to see in an ECG when you are becoming a clinician or you are going for the training in the walls. Okay? So from all these angles you have to see the ECG. Intervals and segments analysis, you will quickly calculate intervals are normal, segments are normal or not. So after looking at the waves, you will see the intervals and the segments. Chamber enlargement, okay? Well, ECG changes tell you about the hypertrophy or increase in size of the chamber also. Okay? So you have to see also from the electrical activity whether chambers are normal or not. And there are some specific changes regarding toxicity and ionic disturbances, electrolyte disturbances, which means you have to see ECG. But at your level, really, at your level, mark this one. Heart rate, you must know. Rhythm, you must know. To some extent, wave morphology, yes. Intervals and segment analysis, yes, you must know. For these three areas, wave morphology, for uh, excess, chamber, and specific changes, it's a little advanced, not the foundation of the ECG. You will learn, but gradually, with time, inshallah. Okay? Very quickly. I'm not going for the calculations right now. Regularity means the distance is equal or not equal. Okay, if the distance is equal, it means your cycles are repeated at regular intervals and it's a normal rhythm. Rhythm is regular. Okay? If two R waves are coming close to each other, two R waves are away, and then the third two R waves are again different, okay, it means irregular. There is not a regular gap between the R waves. Okay. We have a method of checking that. We will train you for that method for the tutorial purpose. Don't worry about that. You will do it. Just wanted to show you. Okay. You have to assess normal values. I am not giving you the normal values because it's written here. You have to see the normal values. What are the normal values of the PR interval, QT interval? Okay. If it is more than that value, it is abnormal. Cardiac axis. This is the normal direction of the cardiac axis. We are not going into detail. Okay. This is the normal direction. You know the impulse runs from here, 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 and then it passes here, and then it turns in right ventricle, left ventricle, then it goes back. So you can see many arrows, different arrows are there. But if you calculate all the arrows and consider only one direction, which is the major direction, that will be the big arrow. Can you see the big arrow? This is the vector which you have calculated from all the different directions. And this is your normal vector. Okay? All right. These are the leads which are looking at the heart from different angles. This is your normal vector. Just one thing. Just one thing. Look at the lead. <coughs> One lead is ADR, other lead is lead 2 of the ECG. 
lead two is like this. <laughs> this one. This is lead two. Okay. ADR, remember? Yeah. ADR is again this is positive and bulb is zero. If you remember. Okay. Look at the direction of the cardiac impulse axis. Look at the recording of the ADR and look at the recording of the lead two. What difference do you see in these two recordings? Look at the net direction of the electrical current. Okay? Is it moving towards the area or away from the area? Is it moving towards the lead two mainly or away from the lead two mainly? Lead two. Okay? Lead two is the best lead to which your vector is pointing really. And AVR is the lead which is really buried on the opposite side. What kind of wave morphology do you see in AVR? Negative. Negative. Why? Remember the rule? Because if your electric current is moving away, so out of your normal ECG, which lead will appear negative waves really? Which, which lead will show the negative waves? AVR. And which lead will show you the best positive waves, Tatriban maximum positive waves? Lead 2 is the best lead. So if you want to just take a long ECG and to see the positive waves, which lead recording will you take? If you want to see the positive waves, sometimes you take the lead 2 and see a long strip of the lead 2 also. Because lead 2 is giving you the best activity, direction of the electric current of the heart. You can see yourself. So waves are even positive, all waves are positive here. And big positive waves. And here everything is opposite. It's the same principle, moving away and moving towards. Alright? This is axis. The axis can change. Actually your axis is here. You know that. But in different diseases and in different conditions, heart enlargement changes in the heart. Axis can move to extremes from here to there. Do you see? Cardiac axis. If it is moving towards this side, right side, you will call it right axis deviation. If it is moving towards the left side, left axis deviation. Okay? So your axis is here. Normal axis is here, but even between 30 and 60 degrees. This could be the range of normal axis. From here to here, you can have the normal axis. But if it is moving like this, your net direction is changing, it's abnormal. It is called left axis deviation. And if it is moving in this direction, you will call it right axis deviation, which is seen in different diseases. Yeah? If I got the ECG result on the monitor, how can I determine the axis? On the monitor, there is a way of checking the axis from the ECG also. And from the monitor run, because one lead is usually shown in the monitor, lead 2 is shown, sometimes you have a complex of leads also, you can have an idea of an axis problem, deviation. We, I'll tell you the way how do we check the axis, but not right now really. In this tutorial, we have only simple steps, rate, rhythm, regularity, and wave morphology only. But we get a printout also. And we have, from the monitor, you can have a graphical recording, the printout. And different printouts, you can easily compare and calculate the axis deviation also. On the running monitor, it's not easy. It will give you a clue, but not completely. Okay? This is the summary which is coming now. Rate, rhythm, axis, interval, C wave, QRS complex, other waves and overall interpretation. Finally, you make the tashkis of the ECG. This will come in steps really. It is only a beginning. We are discussing physiology and we have just laid the foundation of the ECG. The idea was not to discuss any abnormality today. Okay? But slowly and gradually you will identify which ECG is normal and which is not normal. Not normal, we don't expect you to diagnose that abnormality. What is not normal, very simple abnormalities we will teach you for this level. But inshallah with time. It's a very long and complicated field. I hope you have some idea about the ECG today. Yes. Did you get that? And thank you very much. These are the differences that we use. And we are done. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much.